Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. It is that time. I am going to be ranking all of my Pat McGrath Labs palettes from worst to best. These are always my most requested videos. I like to do them about every year or so, give or take, and I'm finally sitting down to do the Pat McGrath video after the Bridgerton palette just launched so I could squeeze that in. There are a few palettes that I have that I'm leaving out because they've been unavailable for more than two years. There's a couple palettes in here that were available like two years ago but anything that's from a really long time ago that I haven't mentioned on my channel for a few years now I'm not mentioning but we still have 24 palettes so that is a lot if you're new here I review Pat McGrath products on my channel every single palette that comes out you can expect a review from me so I have a lot to say and I have a lot to talk about so let's start off with number 24 my least favorite Pat McGrath palette in the collection and unfortunately that goes to this guy this is the Mothership Sublime Golden Opulence palette this came out a couple of years ago and to be completely honest I forgot about its existence which I think goes to show that this deserves to be in last place I hate how this doesn't open up completely flat it really bugs me but anyways the color story in here is just fine like I like it it's nothing special but it's wearable I'm comfortable with it but it's so boring I don't even think about using this palette and I found the shadows in here to be a little bit more dried compared to the formula that Pat McGrath has in her other palettes so I just feel like the quality is a little bit down here I don't love the color story I don't ever want to reach for this I don't ever think about this palette here's the thing it's not a bad palette pretty much every single palette in this video they're really, really good. You're truly asking me to choose between my children. This is just my least favorite of all the ones that I have. It's still good, but I forgot about it. <laughs> Number 23. This one is so pretty, but it just is, does not give me what I want. This is the Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad and Fleur Fantasia. This was from their holiday collection a couple years ago. And here is what this one looks like right here. It's just a little bit too light on me. I mean, if you like that light look, this is really pretty. It's a style. It's a look. But it just doesn't give me what I want. It's not bad quality. It's good quality. And I like the light, fresh spring look that it gives you. But I don't really ever want to reach for it. I rarely do, in fact. And I like it, though. That's the thing. I like all of these palettes, but this just fell at number 23. I don't need to explain myself farther. It's just there. Number 22, I have the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Deep Space Divinity. So here is what this one looks like. This is actually from this year's holiday collection. And honestly, the quality in here is really spectacular. I just don't love the tones in here. I find this to be a kind of boring palette. This like blue brown shadow, pretty much every brand I feel like if they do a duochrome it's this one. And then you just get a red which I don't love really warm tones. You get pretty brown and champagne shades but you guys know Pat McGrath comes up with some really pretty color stories so this one isn't my favorite color story and that's that. Also I would like to add you will notice the quads and smaller palettes are going to be towards the end and then the mothership palettes are more towards the top. I mean I'm sorry there's no way a quad is going to beat out most of the mothership palettes you know what I mean and it is what it is the quads are still really good coming in at 21 we have the eternal eden divine rose luxe quad so this came out in a divine rose collection and this is ranking down here simply because i did not want another rose palette from pat mcgrath and while this is nice i have not reached for it too often since it initially launched and the reason i haven't reached for it is because i didn't need to because i feel like i have so many other rose tone palettes from pat mcgrath so this one definitely gets lost in the sauce okay i don't think about this one too often it's very pretty nonetheless, of course. I just don't reach for it very often. I should. Honestly, I'm looking at this and I'm like, let me let me give her some love. Coming in at number 20, we have the Celestial Odyssey Luxe Quad in Bronze Burialis. Look at this. 
Again, super duper boring color story, but it is a color story that I do feel quite comfortable with. The formula on this is so, so good, so creamy, but again, I have a lot of these tones in my other Pat McGrath palettes, so I haven't reached for this one a ton. This is a newer one. This did come out in the most recent holiday collection, and I do love it, but as a Pat McGrath collector, this was not a quad that I needed at all. I like this better than Deep Space Divinity, which is what I showed you earlier on from this collection as well. It's so boring. Pat McGrath played it so safe with these. I'll give her credit where credit is due though, that formula perfection. Okay, number 19 here. We have the Mothership. This is a baby Mothership. What is the name on this? Rose Decadence. Yes, you'll see a theme here of many, many rose toned palettes. <laughs> uh, this one is very, very pretty. I like this one. The quality here is, again, a wee bit more dry than what I'm used to from the formulas of Pat McGrath. I really noticed this and that golden opulence that they just were not up to snuff with the rest that Pat McGrath has. But I really like the tones that she put in here. I know they're those rose tones that are very repetitive, but they are very, very pretty. So this just, I like it, but it's another rose palette. <laughs> Coming in at 18, I have the Risqué Rose Quad. So yet again, another rose palette. This one, what I love are these two formulations right here because these are not formulations that Pat really has in many other palettes. This is a completely new formula. It's super glittery. That in of itself, I think, makes this palette worth it because of this formula. You also have a really extremely, almost cream eyeshadow right here. It is a powder, but it feels like cream. I'm not too partial to the matte shades that she chose in here. I don't know. I wish we could have done, like, a periwinkle shade and a navy would have been cool. So I don't love the colors she chose, but all around, I think it's a very well-rounded quad. Really, really pretty. Kind of unique when it comes to her quads. You'll see. But I really do like this one a lot. 17, I have the Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad in Interstellar Icon. This one is so pretty, particularly for the blue. I really love it. And then I also love putting this shade all over the eyelid. I'm not too crazy on this shade. And then this shade, of course, is really pretty. It's not a quad that I really want to create a whole look with. I find myself reaching for these shades individually, but it is really gorgeous kind of grungy tones in here. You have this cool purple blue shift, which looks absolutely gorgeous all over the eyelid. So I really, really like this one. <laughs> Number 16 is the palette that I am wearing right now. Can you see this? I love this look. And this is the newest Pat McGrath palette. So this is where the Bridgerton palette is going to land. I love, love, loved this, oops, when I first got it, but the longer I've had it, the less I like it because I feel like it's not as versatile in the looks that you can create uh, because you have two pinky tones, which you have a billion of, and you're always going to use these as your crease shade for the most part because they're the base matte shades here. You do have this matte as well, which is all over my eyelid, which by the way, I did film this look, so it should be on my Instagram or will be up very, very soon. This is an amazing shimmer, and I love this blue lid topper here but I found a lot of the looks that I created with this palette really did look the same but nonetheless I love the colors in here so I keep reaching for it because even though I'm limited I feel like in the looks that I can create these are colors that I really really enjoy playing with if that makes sense but it's not Pat McGrath's best Coming in at number 15, I have a Blitz Astral Quad from Pat McGrath. This is the Iconic Illumination Quad. I believe it's still available on the website. I don't know. But this one, oh, it's so pretty. It's those basic neutrals, but honestly, the formulation in here... So they're the Blitz Astral formulas, and then you have one special glitter shade. I have found myself reaching for this for my neutral looks super often. I especially love these two to put all over my lid for a neutral look. There's something about these shimmers that are still wearable, but they really amp it up. And then, of course, you have this gorgeous, versatile glitter shade that really is truly special to Pat McGrath and makes Pat McGrath such a special brand. So this is by far one of her very best quads. The formulas in here are really great. I love the neutral tones. It's a way to get Pat McGrath in a more wearable form. Really great. 14, we have the very first and my least favorite mothership, but of course, it still is really, really great. This is the Decadence palette. So this is actually one of my newer palettes. I just recently replaced my old one with this, and it's not 
a palette that's from the Mothership line that I'm jumping for joy with, but when you feel how smooth and creamy these shimmers are, it's unbelievable, really. So I grab this a lot of times for lid looks. Like, there's no mattes in here, so I do normally reach out into other palettes when I use this. These are like liquid metal on your eyelids. They're that formulation that will swatch the whole whole way down your arm so creamy this mothership palette lacks the blitz astral and glittery shades that i love from pat mcgrath which instantly shoots it to the bottom because it's the only one that doesn't have them but it is a superb superb shimmer formulation i also am really not um entranced by the color story in this one either i don't feel too inspired by it it's just not my typical tones but the quality mm, Number 13, we have the Blitz Astral Quad in Ritualistic Rose, <laughs> another rose one. But these Blitz Astral Quads, by the way, are the best quads that Pat McGrath has ever had. And I think the most worthwhile because it's four of her super special formulations. This is the formulation that Pat McGrath is all about. And again, it's another boring rose palette, but I think the rose tones in here are special given their formulations. And I love how this one is a little bit more purpley. And then you have a really glittery pink. And then just two really neutral shadows that are very easy to wear. So this is a quad that I often reach for just because it has those tones that I'm very comfortable with in my favorite formulation from Pat McGrath. So this one is just gorgeous. Number 12, I have the Sublime palette. So this is one of her 10 Pam motherships. I actually just filmed yesterday my Beauty Buff tutorial, which is my monthly membership that I have on YouTube. And every month I create a tutorial for my Beauty Buffs exclusively. And this month we chose the Sublime palette, and I really love this one. It's just a, not my favorite color story, I would say, of all the motherships and what they have to offer. You'll see what I mean. These are the Blitz Astrals that are out here in the corner. The green is so fun, but I'm not going to reach for that too often. This shade right here in the top right corner is my favorite. It's like a beautiful golden pink but other than this shade to me the palette isn't something that I'm inclined to reach for color story wise it's great for the neutral tones it has those options as well but you'll see what I mean when I talk about the other Pat McGrath palettes that are available this is just where it happened to fall but I do very much enjoy it 11 is the big holiday palette from this year this is the mothership mega celestial odyssey palette now if you are a beginner into pat mcgrath but you really want to dive in without necessarily breaking the bank for the 10 pm palette this is the best value i would say so this isn't my favorite color story from pat mcgrath i've expressed my feelings on this before i don't feel the most inspired by this color story i don't like the mess that she chose but the quality in here is absolutely insane. And again, that value that I'm talking about. And I'm not saying I can't get pretty looks with this. I've created numerous looks that I love with this. But for me, it takes a little bit more brain work to create a look for some reason with this palette. So I don't jive with the color story as much as I do with the other ones. But it's still freaking awesome. Don't get me wrong. All right, let's get into number 10. This is the OG Divine Rose. So this is the first big Divine Rose palette to come out. I have mine in limited edition pink packaging, which I love so much. And this one is so neutral. You can see it has those rose undertones to it but you see how many pink options Pat McGrath has compared to those pink options this one almost looks brown compared to those it's very very neutral uh, and you have really pretty clean shades this is a palette that I would recommend for a first timer for Pat McGrath if you are a more neutral wearer if you don't experiment with color and glitter and all of that this is a good way to get a more wearable formulation while still getting her Blitz Astral formulations that you're not going to feel overwhelmed by. For me, it's too boring. If I'm reaching for Pat McGrath, I'm reaching for something that's a little bit more daring, which is why I don't reach for this one as often, but it's a really great rose-toned wearable palette. Definitely one of her best sellers and for a very good reason. I totally understand why. Let's get into number nine. I believe, is this our last quad? No, it's not. 
But this is one of my favorite quads. This is another Blitz Astral quad. So remember I said those Blitz Astrals are the best of the best. And this one I love because obviously it is the most colorful one, which I think really tops off any special look that you're creating with Pat McGrath. She, believe it or not, doesn't experiment too much with color. She creates pretty wearable tones of colorful shades, but this right here I think is the most that she's gone out of her way to create a colorful palette, and so I rely on this when I want something a little bit more extravagant from Pat McGrath, whether it's to pop this shade on the lid, to pop the blue on the lid, to pop the deep, deep purple. Of course, she went a little safe with the gold, but I actually also really like this for creating a look in of itself, which is very odd since they're all Bliss Astral, but there's something special about this quad that I absolutely love. It's one of my faves, obviously. <laughs> Number seven, we have the Mothership Midnight Sun Palette. Now this one, of course, I love. Guess why? If you know me, you know it's because of the purple shades. I also really love how earthy this palette is. So this palette, if you get rid of these right here, it's one of those more earthy toned shades, which I think makes it so wearable for many of you guys, but you can still get some really grungy, smoky eyes with this half of the palette as well. You have an option to warm it up. You have a bronze shade. I love this kind of green tone right here. The purple is really, really fun to add in believe it or not and even let's take the purple out you can see it actually is quite a neutral palette it's for a little bit more deeper tones so for example like the divine rose that's like a neutral palette but it's more rosy this one is a little bit more grungy if you ask me but how beautiful is this earthy toned palette I really like this one. I don't reach for it as often as the others that are going to come after this, but it's a gorgeous one, especially if you like those kind of neutrals. Coming in at number six, this is the best quad that Pat McGrath has to offer in my personal opinion. This is the Venus and Fleurs Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. There's something so special about the formulation that's in this one. So you get one matte and three shimmers. So two of which are going to be true like shimmer metallics. And then another one is a really pretty glittery formulation. I wasn't in love with this palette when I first got it because I was like, ah, we have all of these tones from Pat McGrath already. But the quality in here is truly unbeatable. There's something that's so special about this. And I reach for it all the time because of the look that it creates. It's just so pretty. You don't need to put the glitter on and you get such a pretty easy quick eye makeup look that looks like you spent so much more time but of course your girl likes glitter pop a little bit of the glitter on it's stunning it's a duochrome glitter if you were to get any quad this is the one that i would recommend i think it's her best quality and most well-rounded quad number six is the mothership one subliminal a very slip on palette if you ask me it's always been one of my favorites so you're going to like this if you are into cool tones or are looking to add more cool tones into your collection so take a look look how work friendly this can be and you can see runs very very cool but i do think um i mean cool tones are more popular now but when this first launched there were not a lot of cool tone palettes on the market so this fulfilled that for many years which is why well not many but for a few years which is why this has always been in my top i also think they have some of the best blitz astral shades in here this palette is the best for layering you can layer any of these shimmers over like the brown or black and it's just going to transform these shades which gives the palette so much more versatility you can create so many different looks on multiple occasions i've layered this over the navy i've layered this over the black i've layered this over the black and this over the black this over the brown the perfect palette for layering and it's just so fun to play with it is essentially kind of one of the more boring mothership palettes from pat mcgrath but i actually find it to be one of the most versatile and fun to play with coming in at number five we have the newest pat mcgrath palette and i did not expect this to end up being one of my top mothership palettes i obviously liked it it was so so gorgeous but I didn't think I would use this as often as I ended up using this this year. So take a look at this. You can see we have more rosy tones, which I think was a little bit off-putting to me. I mean, there's so many rose palettes here. But the shimmers in here, 
I can't stop reaching for them. I think they are the prettiest shimmers. So this palette is one of my most used from Pat McGrath this year. So take a look here. I mean, even though, yeah, we have more rosy tones, they perfectly complement the shimmer shades in here, which are the things that I go for, okay? If I want a purple glittery eye, I'm going for this palette. You have this really crazy sparkly pinky one, and then this crazy sparkly purple one, and then the rest are just in the background. It's about these two for me. So I reach for this one a lot. It also has a really fine multi-chrome shade in here, which is very good quality as well. But it's those two shades on the end that really push this one to the top for me. Number four was at one point my all-time favorite Pat McGrath palette. It's fallen down, you know. I've changed over the last few years and the makeup that I wear, but this is the Bronze Seduction, and this is another one that I recommend for first-timers when it comes to investing in a Pat McGrath palette because it is a huge investment. Jeez, how crazy are we to spend this amount on eyeshadows? But how pretty is this? I'm looking at this, and I want to pull this out again. I love that she has different tones of, like, a plum, a dark brown, and a warmer brown. You have some bronzy shades in here, of course, and then you can really play it up. Well, first of all, look at the base shades right here. Great for every day. She always does this with her motherships, but then you have these fun colors right here. You have like a green to pink shift. You have a white to green shift in here. You have a classic really beautiful rose and then you have a really warm shade which this cranberry and plum together are fabulous. So this palette has created some of my favorite everyday looks. This is a palette that I go for when I don't want to be too crazy with my makeup but I still want that rich unique Pat McGrath look. So this is the perfect line for me between wearable but still a little bit more bold and so many neutral lovers also do really enjoy this palette especially if you love a really rich eye. It's also a stunning palette for deeper skin tones as well. So this is one of my favorites. I believe it is one of her best sellers and for a good reason. It's definitely one to consider also if you are looking to purchase one of your first few pat palettes. Number three, this is truly such a personal choice but I love the color story so much and I love the quality in this one. This is the Celestial Divinity palette. Um, so, this actually has two palettes in here that Pat already had launched. She had a limited Star Wars collection come out a few years, few years ago, and there were two palettes. This is one of those palettes, and then this is one of those palettes. I actually used to have them. They are my mom's, and I was perfectly happy to pick this one up. I love the color story in here. It's because it leans so purple that I'm very drawn to it. I love that we have this green punch in here and this red punch in here. It's one of my favorite color stories from Pat. It's a really great formulation. I feel so much more inspired from this palette than I do the other Mega Mothership palette that I shared with you. And I think, you know, I think people like this one, but most people prefer the other Mega Mothership that I showed you. This palette makes me feel so much more inspired and I, I feel more comfortable with the tones in here. It's very odd, but I do. <laughs> okay, number one and two. I was in a fight in my head last night about these two palettes. This palette I'm about to show you was the number one, but ultimately I decided it did not fulfill what I wanted to be number one, okay? The reason this was almost number one is because it truly was the most used Pat McGrath palette by me and one of my most used palettes of 2021. This is the Mothership Divine Rose 2 palette. I have never looked at this palette and went, this is my favorite palette. But I grab for this palette all the time. It really just has those tones that I'm looking for. And I didn't think that it would. I really always have liked this palette. But I've never looked at it and gone, wow, this is the palette for me. This is my favorite palette. But dang, I just keep reaching for it. And it's just, it's inexplicable. It's, I can't explain it. Why do I keep grabbing for this? I can tell you I love to use these two shades as blushes. And I just think the pink and gold are such complementary tones. I feel comfortable with this color story. It's that color story where it's like, it's not completely boring. It's not brown like Divine Rose 1. And Divine Rose 1 will look very brown compared to this. It's amped up, which is what I want from Pat McGrath. But it's still comfortable to be worn. I love that there's a multi-chrome in here, which honestly I don't really like this multi 
multi-chrome, but I just like having it. This shimmer right here is super stunning. Um, it's just within a comfort zone for me, and if I want to use the Pat McGrath formula and I'm going somewhere in public, I don't want my makeup to be crazy, I grab for this. So yes, Divine Rose 2 almost hit number one. But I didn't feel satisfied putting this at number one because I don't look at it and completely melt to the floor. What I look at, and if you're a Pat fan, you already know what this is. I believe this has been my number one before in a ranking. What melts my heart? It's not as used as Divine Rose 2, but when I think of Pat McGrath and when I want to reach for Pat McGrath, this is the type of palette that I think of where her genius as an artist really shows through in this palette. So this is the Mothership 3 Subversive palette. It's always out of stock, and for good reason. It's by far, I would say, the most unique palette in this line as well. If you can get a hold of it, it's so unique. So take a look at this. It's really, really a deep palette, but it is so fun. You can create so many different looks. It's extremely versatile. This also, just like the Subliminal palette, I feel is so versatile to layer shadows with because it has this black and this brown and this glittery black. You can do so much with the end here with the green, the purple blue, the white pink, and this like rose gold pink. It's just my favorite. I <laughs> I want to go further into detail about this, but I can't other than it's just the perfect Pat McGrath palette in my opinion. And I really, really wish she would launch palettes that are a little bit more risky like this. Because this is not a classic wearable palette that she creates. You know how normally when I cover this, you can see how wearable the palette is? This is deep. This is smoky. This is rich. It's more artistic and editorial. And that's why this has to be number one. You guys know I'm such a strong Pat McGrath fan. I love her makeup line. I love the products that she comes out with. But this is what I want from her. This is why I follow her as an artist. Anyways, there we have it. Those were all 24 Pat McGrath palettes that I have ranked for you guys from worst to best. Let me know what you think of my rankings. I know a lot of you guys use this as guides to purchase your palettes, so I hope this video was helpful for you. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, make sure you are, because I have a Natasha Denona rankings coming very soon as well. Thanks for sending this one through with me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.